AFL wrapping tube cable is an outside plant 600 pound rated cable. AFL wrapping tube cable design uses embedded strength members to reach the GR20 test requirements. On dielectric cable, there is a ridge at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock of the cable with the strength rods at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. This can also be determined by flexing the cable finding its axial bending direction. Armored cable has no ridge and will need to be flexed to define rod locations. Prior to coiling the cable for storage, review the WTC specifications. When coiling a raw stub end, lay cable out straight and remove all twists. Start the coil from the cut end and coil it backward towards the vault, making sure you do not add twists or violate the minimum bend radius. Make sure you seal the raw end of any WTC as it will absorb water into the water blocking wrap. When coiling a mid-access storage coil, care must be taken to properly coil WTC. The standard flip and fold method should not be used with wrapping tube cable. Many methods can be used that do not add twist or violate the static minimum bend radius. AFL has optimized a coiling method for WTC for many common storage applications. AFL recommends that you extend the cable out of the handhole and find the center of the cable to be coiled. Remove all twists in the slack cable loop. If a twist remains in the slack cable, it should be manipulated into the duct rather than stored in the slack coil. Continue to coil the cable until you can drop the coil into the handhole. During the coiling process, if you can see a twist developing in one of the legs of the coil, you can flip the entire stack of coils in the opposite direction to take the twist out. Once the cable is in the handhole, you can adjust the diameter by spinning the individual coils in the handhole to loosen or tighten the coil. When all is adjusted and complete, the entire coil can be tie wrapped or taped together. Secure with tie wraps and review final installation for twist or improper bends. Step-by-step -step demonstration. Remove all twists and align strength rods. Fully extend coil loop and manipulate twists from the storage coil if needed. Confirm minimum bend radius and ensure end teardrop does not violate this dimension. Tape initial teardrop to preserve diameter. Start with a large coil, over or under as needed by location. Slowly work the coil to the desired diameter to fit the vault. Keep in mind not to violate the minimum bend radius with the second teardrop. Continue coiling until it is ready to drop in the vault. Size coil to fit in vault while maintaining minimum bend radius at all locations of the coil. Cut the initial teardrop tape to release the bend as much as possible. The S of the coil should be end to end on the longest side of the vault. Secure with tie wraps and review final installation for twist or improper bends. If the coil needs to be passed through a restrictive opening such as a manhole opening, the coil teardrop can be unwound and passed through the opening after the coil. By removing the teardrop from the coil, the coil can now be compressed into an oval while maintaining the minimum bend radius at the top and bottom of the loop. Once the coil is in the vault, the teardrop can be repositioned within the coil or secured outside the coil, depending on the available space. Remove tape restraining teardrop. Allow it to release in the vault coil. Secure with tie wraps and review final installation for twist or improper bends. There are times when the preferred coiling method will not work for a given location. There are coiling alternatives that do not violate the minimum bend radius or twist specification. A secondary method is to dress the cable around the outside perimeter, starting from both conduit inputs in opposite directions. Continue to walk the cable in the vault as these coils continue layer upon layer, following the natural lay of the cable until reaching the end of the storage loop. The last coil will need to be on top or tucked under depending on the coil in the vault. This must be done in a way not to induce a twist in the cable, as well as not violate the minimum bend radius of the cable. Alternating coil directions may be helpful in this method. Secure with tie wraps and review final installation for twist or improper bends. When splicing WTC in a splice closure, 
try to have the WTC cable strength rods and ridges installed in the same orientation. This helps coil the first few feet more easily. The closure will replace the teardrop from the previous coiling video, but will need to be handled by a second person during the coiling process. Secure coil with tie wrap or tape if desired. This will allow the minimum bend radius to be maintained. Do not bend sharply when leaving the splice case. Support the cable in the closure entrance when coiling to make sure the strength rods do not get damaged when exiting the splice closure. Do not use the closure as a handle to pull the cable. Before installing the specified cable storage length within a pedestal, measure the inside mounting plate to make sure that the cable does not exceed the static bend radius. This bend radius diameter is based on the smallest diameter loop that will be stored within the cable bracket. Note, the specified pedestal diameter is not the same as the coil bracket diameter and should not be used to determine the minimum bend radius. The more cable that is placed inside the cable bracket, the tighter the loop will become, typically about 20 feet of low count cable, 144 or 288 is stored in a pedestal. Lay cable out flat and remove twists. Fully extend coil loop and manipulate twists from the storage coil if needed. Confirm minimum bend radius and ensure end teardrop does not violate this dimension. Make a coil mid-cable, but do not violate the minimum bend radius or induce twists into the cable. Work coil to ped and lay teardrop over coil. Slip on pre-connected tie wraps to maintain oval, but not violate bend radius. This will have to be adjusted at the pedestal when attaching coil. This can be adjusted by increasing or decreasing coil diameter adjusting the height of the oblong coil and by pushing or pulling slack from the duct. This must look like the image here with the teardrop centered in one end and the S of the coil running vertically in the pedestal. Snowshoes must maintain the static minimum bend radius of the cable installed. When storing slack on a snowshoe, maintain a 12 and 6 rod position and secure the cable to the snowshoe. Final review. Make sure you have accurate and up-to-date specifications for minimum bend radius. Ensure the bend radius is maintained in the coiling process. Ensure the coiling method you choose does not induce twist in the cable. Flip and fold cannot be used to coil WTC. Secure and review final installation for twist and bend.